Hello. So uh, this week, um, I had a few things. A lot of it was store walk-in. Actually, I just got back from hitting up uh, a Value Village thrift store, and I did really well there. Um, as you will see in moments, I have a, a very rare, found a very rare variant of a uh, He-Man, vintage He-Man figure, um, and a few other things. But mostly it was toys and just a few sort of weird uh, or interesting metal pieces that I, uh, I just happened across. Um, the wrestling figures and the Star Wars figures were store walk-ins. Uh, the Star Wars costume got thrown in. Uh, I can't actually remember. Where did I get the cycle kit? I think that was a walk-in too. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff was uh, brought in. When I say walk-in, I mean somebody brings it into the store to sell uh, or trade. Um, so we did that. I hit one small little sort of um, antique type mall uh but it was it's not a you know a big one or anything like big fancy one or anything like that so um but i did manage to find a couple like i said interesting metal pieces so we'll get uh right into it and um we'll start with uh actually we'll go over the value village stuff at the very end um and because that is really the best piece and it's something you might want to pay attention to because it, it's uh, they could still be out there. You do find uh, some vintage stuff once in a while. So we'll go with the metal stuff first. First of all, this is a, um, I believe it's the Toronto Hockey League, uh, which formed in like 1911. This is a 1944-45 People's Credit Jewelers Major Series Hockey Trophy. Now it's just sort of um, cast metal pot metal as they call it it probably would have been mounted on a plaque um but it's a really cool figural piece um and it was relatively inexpensive so i thought you know what why not let's just grab that um i've had one just like it before actually so i know it's worthwhile this is kind of interesting uh he says I've, I've seen these but i've never seen it with the from montreal sticker on there um it's in a heart shape it shows a uh, in this case, I imagine what you're supposed to imagine as a Canadian soldier and uh, what looks like a Dutch girl. Um, and if you know your World War II history, the, the Canadians um, had a big uh, thing in, in uh, liberating the Netherlands. Uh, and so there's a big connection there. And um, But you look at it and you think, oh, you know, that's that's kind of sweet. That's kind of nice. Then you flip it over and you're like, you dirty bugger look at that yeah so that's kind of a fun one uh not something you'd really expect um so yeah i couldn't really leave that one behind and then this one is a parker davis uh and it's just super kind of like it looks really sinister and that's the reason why i went for it it kind of has a very sinister looking vibe to it it's probably veterinary more than anything but it's this um giant syringe uh with all the needle heads like i said more than likely it's veterinarian um related um but like steampunk people would probably enjoy this uh gothic people just you know people into weird medical stuff because they're out there you have to be careful with these because those are still you know super sharp um but it is thing made in the usa by parker davis and co right there i don't know if you can see that um, again, another thing, pretty inexpensive. Uh, I think I bought all three of these for, um, somewhere around 30 bucks, which I know for some people might be, oh my gosh, that's quite a bit, but not, not really for what, what they are. Uh, fun things that came into the store this week. Um, one of them was the, uh, smaller collection of 1990s, uh, wrestling, the sort of the minifigures, the, the follow-up to the, uh, LJNs. Um, that sort of ran their course out at the end of the 80s, so they brought these in, and all the guys are in there. I mean, um, they all have little actions. Some of them work on this one, some of them don't, um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're worth picking up, especially if you see them, like, at a garage sale or something like that. Um, basically worked out a trade for these, uh, for something they wanted. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if we can get the action to go, guys. Neck just goes down. I don't really know what that does in terms of wrestling, but probably freak you out if somebody did that to you in a wrestling ring. Um, that's the Ultimate Warrior. 
There's Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, the Bash Brothers are here. There's Hogan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, no, don't do that, Jake. Um, there's one I'm not super familiar with because I wasn't uh, watching wrestling at this point in my life. But, uh, yeah, the Mountie. But it's kind of cool from a standing standpoint. There's another Jake the Snake. A few other guys in there. Good lot to pick up. And then someone um, broadened the store. This um, Star Wars Darth Vader head um, carrying case, which I was like, oh, I've got a couple of those. Turns out there were figures in it. Um, uh, I sold my Star Wars collection, actually. I started selling it off about four or five years ago. Um, and then last year, I think, last Christmas, actually, yeah, a gentleman came in and bought uh my entire showcase which was filled with star wars stuff and bought it all in one go and turns out i missed it a little bit so some of these i'll probably end up hanging on to because i do have some loose weapons and stuff still but you know i get c-3po and um lando calrissian bosk all the guys in there um and checked our five out for the there are a lot of variants that you sort of have to look for this isn't one but um this R5 unit is, I forget what the variant is, but uh, if you go online and look, uh, the stickers, some of the stickers are actually different. Um, and uh, those command higher prices when you actually, if you luck out and find one of those. Um, with most of the 80s and 90s toys, variants have become really, really important to collectors. Uh, I When I started collecting back in the 90s, um, it wasn't really a thing. Uh, there were, you know, a few, like the big, the vinyl cape Jawa, everybody really knew about that, but th there, you know, and there are a few color variants and hair and things like that, but the, people didn't study it like they do now. Um, and so, you know, you can get really involved, uh, in, if you start collecting the variants and a lot of people do, because once you get through the original figures, you sort of run out of stuff to collect. So I think a lot of people, that's one of the reasons why they started doing that. And it also goes for other um, other toy lines. Uh, and you know what? While we're here, we'll go straight into that. I went into the Value Village today and found this guy. Now, let's see if we can get on there. That is Grizzlor from uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, but if you notice, he has a very dark face. Now, normally his face is a lot lighter than that. And this is known as the dark face variant. You can see I only paid $7.99 for it. But what's really crazy about it is, is that it was actually listed under decor and housewares. And it was hung in their decor and housewares wall. Um, they had, they put like small sort of ceramic figures and uh, like little collectible figures that aren't considered toys over there. And <clears throat> somebody brought in a collection of trolls. And I guess the trolls weren't, they didn't consider them toys because they put them all over there. Um, and this guy was hanging there. I just, I, my only guess is they assumed that he was a, a troll of some kind. Um, and so I kind of got lucky because I imagine if he was in the toy section, somebody would have noticed and picked him right away. But uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. Uh, pick up. Um, the, night, the other nice thing is I actually have, he's without his accessories, but I have uh, one, a full set of his accessories um, kicking around someplace. We'll have to dig that out, but it's a really valuable figure. If you look up the comps on the dark face uh, Grizzlor, uh, I think you'll be surprised. And again, these are the kind of things that if, if you want to search and learn really quick, um, just go to eBay, just type in He-Man vintage figures and then just search from most valuable to least because you can do those things and you get to see, wow, here's some really valuable figures. And usually they'll tell you within it why it is. Um, you know, you can go and buy books. There's lots of websites on it as well. Um, but you could do that with just about anything on, on eBay, any collectible. Type it in, search from the solds, from the highest to lowest, and, and you begin to learn. Um, and that's the key to this game is, you know, I've had, I actually had a couple of people send me messages lately asking me, you know, how do you know what to buy? And it's time. Uh, I've been, my parents were collectors. Um, I got dragged around to collectible shows my whole life. I'm over 50 now. God, that's hard to say. Um, and it's just time 
uh, you, you really do, uh, like any sort of um, skill set, not that this is really a skill set, but you, you just have to see the stuff over and over again and handle it over and over and begin to learn about it and do research and have books. Uh, I'm a generalist. I genuinely uh, don't know a lot uh, about um, most things. I know a little bit about a lot of things and I specialize in a few things that I know a lot about. Um, but I've been doing this and going to shows for long enough that generally um, I recognize things um, just like I did today when I saw that. If that had been just a regular Grizzlow art at $7.99, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. Um, it's uh, He-Man figures loose, uh, the art special, you know, that's probably about what it would have been worth. Um, but I did recognize that it was, uh, you know, the dark face variant. And uh, yeah, so again, it's, it's putting in the time, um, going to shows as often as you can, going into stores as often as you can, just doing basic reading on eBay, um, you know, in your spare time to learn, because you have to be curious about this. Most people who got into the collectibles game, um, buying and selling, were collectors first. Um, and as anybody who knows me will tell you, I've been a collector slash hoarder my whole life. Um, and, you know, part of the reason why I'm able to do, have a store like this is because I bought a lot of this stuff, um, you know, back uh, in the 1980s and 90s when, when people weren't that interested in mid-century modern items as much and weren't interested in, in records for, for sure and certainly weren't interested in, you know, toys that much, um, especially not 90s toys and 80s toys. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things, partially being a collector of the right stuff at the right time and, and knowledge. So yeah, that's my master class for today. Um, so moving on, <clears throat> this is a Ben Cooper Star Wars. This was basically thrown in with the uh, Star Wars case. Um, it's in really rough shape. It is the Leah costume, an original one. Uh, ben Cooper been around since at least the 60s making costume uh, masks, usually those plastic masks. Uh, the Star Wars ones were uh, pretty great. Unfortunately, there's no mask in this, uh, but I just love the graphics on the box. And um, so I just, the guy basically threw it in, so I just took it. Um, go Bots. These were the Transformers if your parents couldn't pay for, like, the hugely expensive Transformers. Um, and uh, people do collect them. And now I'm not going to be able to get this box open and show you, but basically it's a model kit. It's a part build. Um, it is from the 1980s. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess it's a convertible model kit. Well, that must be special. Um, but yeah, I, I actually have quite a few GoBots in the store. Um, they're beginning to sell a lot more. Again, because I think people have sort of who collect Transformers have run out of, uh, you know, Transformers they can collect. So GoBots are still fairly affordable. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're just looking for a fun toy, there's, there you go. Um, it's one of these giant, um, I call them wine goblets, but that's not what they are at all. They're, um, some people call them carafes. I've heard other different names. Um, this is an optical version of them, as they're called. Probably this one was made in Italy because I have a few that are from Italy. But if you hold it up, you can see it's got a nice pattern on there that shows the light through in a really kind of cool way. And this is an unusual color. I actually haven't seen um, sort of that aquamarine color before. And uh, I don't know if you can see way back there. I've got a shelf with quite a few on there. Um, Usually these were made in Italy, uh, some are marked, some are not. Usually the markings are almost always a label and that was almost always washed off. So um, again, same thing, just knowing, uh, seeing these patterns, uh, um, sort of in this case, I've seen this, it's, it's like a diamond optical pattern, um, you know, uh, and people do collect them. They look great in windows, they really do. Or if you're just really, really into booze, that is, yeah, that's a good swigger. Um, what else? Oops. Oh yeah, that was, forgot that, that was in the antique store too. I, it, it's a little old ashtray, um, but it's a beanbag. And from, it's got a lot of dirt on there. Wow, that doesn't look good. 
I'm going to guess it's Washington, D.C., and it's an early photographic image. And my guess, honestly, is probably this is like 1920s era. Um, you know, the beanbag, the material on there, it's a bit worn. But yeah, that would be my best guess. I'm going to clean that up. Probably throw it on eBay and see where it goes because it's pretty cool. Nice piece of little piece of Americana, and it's just an unusual asterisk. People collect asterisks. So. Um, yeah, a Coleco head-to-head. -head. Um, the box is pretty beat up, but it's in there. Um, so that'll go in, because I've got quite a few of those. And then the other one um, that's quite a bit of fun is, um, this is a Mr. Potato Head. Um, it's the Canadian one, because it's got uh, Monsieur Patat. Um, and a lot of people don't realize this, but um, Mr. Potato Head, when it started out, you didn't get a figure. You actually, they just sent you, um, let me see if I can actually get this open or not. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Just one second. Just two hands. Is that for camera work? Um, yeah, so, um, there's the instructions and some of the other uh, things you can, actually one I'd love to get would be the Mr. Potato Head on the Moon right there. Those are pretty great. Um, so you were supposed to supply the fruit, basically. Um, in this case, you get a potato and then you stick these guys on there. Um, and there's a fair amount of pieces um, on there. And there was, you know, you could do a cucumber or an onion or a pepper, an apple or, you know, whatever. Um, but there were different kinds of set. There was uh, Mr. Potato Head on the railroad, Mr. Potato Head at the parade. He's on a farm. But that moon set is, yeah, just for the box alone. I'd, I'd love to have a thing for myself. Um, so this was Hassenfeld Brothers of Montreal, which is Hasbro. Um, and I, you know what, I don't know what the year is on this. Yeah, I don't really say, but I'm going to guess probably sometime in the late 60s. I should know this offhand, but I really don't. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's just kind of a, a neat little thing. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, Mr. Potato Head started out just that. You actually used a real potato that you supplied. Um, and you just stuck the eyes, nose, glasses, all the other feet on it, all the other stuff. So, yeah, so that's it um, for this week. Once again, it's uh, not a huge haul, but uh, some good quality things. That Grizzlor is, uh, was a nice score for sure. Uh, pretty happy with that. And uh, thank you guys for uh, the comments and questions and messages that you've sent. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, if you want, you can, uh, we've got a Facebook group for the store. So if you search, uh, at, if you just search time capsule Dunville, three words, uh, you should join up. There's about 1500 people on there now, I think. Um, and Instagram page at time capsule Dunville, same thing, uh, join up. Um, you can see when I get new stock in, you can send me messages through there. Um, it'd be, you know, much appreciated. And if you guys could uh, like and subscribe or suggest this uh, this page to friends, um, I am going to, I know I keep saying this, at some point I'm going to be buying a GoPro probably in the new year. And so uh, next uh, season, uh, you know, in the summer when garage sales and antique markets and outdoor antique markets start opening up again, uh, I will be taking that out with me. Um, and uh, at that point, I'll have to learn how to edit. So things will get a little bit more professional, but not too professional, because honestly, I just, I can't be bothered. Um, but I do find this fun. And uh, yeah, so does my son. He thinks it's uh, it's pretty great. Dad's got a YouTube channel. So yeah, if you could like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I hope you all are able to find a few treasures over the next couple of weeks. And um I hope you guys have uh, a good Christmas if that's what you celebrate. And if not, just have a happy holidays overall. Um, I hope everybody's able to spend time with the loved ones and, and stay, stay, uh, stay safe this season. Bye.